Welcome back to my channel. I am Kahila or K, and today's video is going to be a simple one, you guys. It's not a vlog. It's not a knit with me, not a crochet with me. Insane. It is my process on how I create my patterns, basically. Create my patterns, design my patterns. It's quite simple. So first, let's start off with saying, in this video, I am not teaching you guys how to write a pattern at all. <laughs> at all, okay? Kalila, more copycat lace. She already did that, so I'll link her video up here and down below in the description box for you guys so that you can follow it if you wanna learn how to create a crochet pattern. But this video, I was just thinking the other day, I was just like, I was crocheting the other day, and I was just like, did I ever show you guys how to, like my process of how I like create my patterns or design my patterns and like my thought process and stuff? I'm like, I don't think I've ever, created a video especially like specifically and solely for that so I'm like you know what let me just tell you guys especially since I'm working on a project now and creating a pattern designing a pattern so yeah first let me show you guys what I'm actually working on alrighty so if you guys have seen my vlogs you will kind of know what I'm working on but I only have a sleeve done so here is the sleeve it's nice and chunky so i'm currently designing a chunky crochet sweater it's like it's gonna be slightly oversized and chunky and it's gonna be measurement a measurement based pattern so anyone of any size can create it but this is what the sleeve looks like i still need to weave in my i don't weave in my ends okay honestly i mean i weave in my ends you know, with like when I crochet, when I weave in my ends, I usually like my ends are usually part of the sewing process. So I just like sew my ends when I'm sewing my sweater together. So then the ends are like tucked in. So anyway, okay, sorry. This is what it looks like. I literally only have to sleep done. I need to work on this project. <sighs> anyway, I am using Drops Air for it. And this is what the yarn looks like. Drops Air. I love Drops Air. I'm using three strands for it. And I decided to use three strands because I tried two and I was just like, mm, I don't feel like that's chunky enough. So I went with three and I was just like, mm, perfect. Let me actually take you guys like kind of step by step on my thought process before I even get to like actually crocheting it. Okay. So first of all, I need to figure out like this is me thinking, I'm like, okay, I want to create a pattern. I need to figure out exactly what I want to design. So I'm like, hmm, don't want to design something for the summer, winter. I think about the seasons, I'm like, for the summer, winter, fall, spring. I'm just like, hmm, it's usually for the winter because I love sweaters, but sometimes it's for the summer as well. And with this pattern, I was like, hmm, what haven't I done before? And I've done sweaters, I've done like crop tops, I've done different things, I did a dress. I was just like, I haven't done a chunky sweater! So I'm like, okay, boom, we got that down. Chunky sweater, obviously that's winter. Okay, hello. Chunky, a little oversized, and then like, my imagination is insane, amazing. I can see everything, I can see everything in 3D. I can, I just see everything, okay, in my mind. So I literally just sit there and I just imagine what I want it to look like. I don't draw anything. I got my iPad, well, mainly so I can have a separate thing for like business and stuff, but also so that I can possibly draw out my designs, but I can imagine it so vividly in my mind that I don't need to draw it. So I haven't drawn any of my designs. I just, I just think about it, it's in my head, and then I just, I'll tell you guys my process, but yeah. So I'm just imagining it and I'm just like, okay, it can be slightly oversized. I want the cuffs to look this way. Should I do ribbing? Should I not do ribbing? And then I'm just like thinking of like how I want the sweater to look like basically. And after all of that, then it is time to figure out the construction, like the actual details of the construction of this sweater. So I have templates for my patterns. I have a sweater template, a crop top template, short sleeve shirt template. 
just in template as in like I have a default pattern that I refer to so that I remember like how long my arms are for my sleeves like how many stitches I crocheted for that for the ribbing for the body so then I can go off of that and then I can make my adjustments the way I want to because I know what I'm working with if that makes sense and I only have these templates because I have designed other patterns in the past so I'm like okay this can be the default and let me see okay I can make this longer this way and so I don't have to think from scratch because I don't want to have to think from scratch honestly let's be honest okay so I take my existing template and I'm just like all right <laughs> it just makes it easier and I change up like most of the pattern, but at least I know what to work with. At least I don't have to think like, do I have to do 30 stitches for this or blah, 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 blah. I just know like, okay, 30 stitches gets me this length or this width and okay, I can do blah, 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 you know? Okay, and then after that, I solidify whether or not I want my sweater, for example, the sweater to be oversized, true to size, do I want my sleeves full length, half, short sleeve i mean it's a sweater so it's gonna be long but you know you know i just think about those things and solidify it do i want cuffs on it or do i want it like my other sweater that i made where i didn't have any ribbing for the cuffs or anything and it was just like a big circle like a bellish type of sleeve so i solidified those little things and then after that then I start writing out the specifics of what I want. And usually I write all of these things out in my notes app. Like everything is in my notes app on my iPad. So, I mean, I can access it from my phone as well. And I write little details on my phone if my phone is near me, but I usually like to use my iPad for this so it can feel like, okay, this is like the business. This is okay, we're serious, you know? So I start writing out like the stitch counts, the row counts. I like to, I have, them, okay. My brain is usually everywhere during this process, so it's hard to like solidify it, but I tried my best. <laughs> so I usually have my template, which already has like stitch count and row count, but then I change it up to fit like, for example, this chunky version. So this chunky version, it will require less stitches than like a worsted weight sweater that I've made before. So I usually like guesstimate how many stitches I'll need for ribbing, how many stitches I'll need for the sleeves, how many rows and everything like that. And then after I do all my guesstimations, I'm like, okay, this looks good. I can start with this. And then that is when I start solidifying my yarn choices. Okay, we can't forget about the yarn choices. That's like the most important thing honestly to me when designing like my yarn choice I need to figure out the yarn choice usually before I start designing I kind of know what yarn I want to use but as I like start my designing process I could change it up depending on what yarn I see somebody else use or what yarn my sister suggests and I'm like hmm you know that actually sounds really good so I start browsing yarn weights I start browsing yarn brands I usually have like a specific list of brands that I like to use for my sweaters and for my patterns anyway so I'll give you guys a list kind of so I usually like to stick with like I'll just name off different fibers. So for acrylic, I like to use Impeccable because to me that's like one of the softest acrylic yarns that I've used. For cotton, I usually use like Dishy, but I'm trying to change that up a little bit. Actually this year, I want to try out Knitting for Olives Merino, Cotton Merino, I think it's called and see what that's like because I've never used a cotton merino blend before and I feel like that'll be really good for the summer and I have lots of patterns that I'm gonna be designing for the summer. You guys, I'm so excited. So many crochet patterns will be coming out this summer. It's gonna be great. I've already been working on it. I know exactly what I'm gonna do. Oh, it's gonna be great. Anyway, so I wanna try out Nymphra Olive's cotton merino and I also just found out that Drops has a cotton merino, so I'm gonna try that out as well and then compare it to the Knitting for Olive cotton merino and see which one works better. So it's gonna be fun like trying out those different fibers that I haven't like used together before. And then for wool and like mohair, I usually use Knitting for Olive, their heavy merino, merino, or their soft silk mohair. Or I use Drops, Air, 
drops brushed alpaca oh i forgot alpaca. i use alpaca drops brushed alpaca and then like i use a lot of drops okay drops almost everything and i use their kid silk mohair even though i like knitting for olive zone a little better because it's softer but it's great so i usually use those brands am i forgetting anything else i have my phone right here with my notes so i don't like so i don't forget anything don't i want to tell you guys yeah, so those are the brands that I usually use for any of my projects. And then I use hand dyed yarn for some of my projects as well. But I usually don't use it for my patterns just because I would rather use brands that are like more accessible to you guys. And then after all of that, okay, after the design process of figuring out the stitch count, the row count, the yarn, the visualization of how big I want it to be, whether I want it to be true size, oversized, long sleeves, half sleeves, all of that after doing all of that, okay, it seems like it's not a lot, but honestly, it can be a lot, which is why I don't complain about the prices of patterns. I know a lot of people complain about like, oh, patterns $7, patterns $10. But honestly, these designers put so much into their work. And for people to complain about paying $10, 7 to $10 for a pattern that they'll have forever to create a garment forever is insane to me. And that's a whole conversation and topic for another time after i am done with all of that i have my yarn choice i start crocheting the project and then you know making my changes as i go adjusting my numbers for what i actually want for like stitch count row count and then after i am done with all of that and i usually have my pattern written out in my notes app first and then after i am done and i feel like this is exactly what i want i go to my other template my actual like pattern template and I type in everything adjust the pattern to what I want it to look like and all of that fancy stuff and then I'm done I have written a pattern I usually don't have pattern testers because I have my sisters and they look over it they create the garment if they want to create it but usually it's just simple and since it is measurement a measurement based pattern like I don't need testers and yeah that's my process guys. This is a short, simple, sweet video. At least I think it was short. I don't know. Anyway, this is a nice, simple video that I wanted to film for you guys because I don't think I've ever told you guys my process. So here it is. And if you guys ever want to refer back to it, it will be here for you guys. But that's going to be it for this video. Thank you guys so much for sitting down and listening to my process of how I design my crochet patterns. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know what you think down below. And if you have a process, if you design patterns, let me know what you do because I would love to know if it's different or not. Don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, and click that notification bell because it will notify you whenever I post another video. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram as well because that's where I post any updates about anything happening with me, my channel, and any projects that I'm working on. And I'll see you guys in my next one.